I studied all the billionaires of the world to see what made them successful. I read every book, I listened to every podcast, I watched every video, I learned hundreds of insights, some more complex than others, but eventually I condensed all my findings into seven habits of the ultra wealthy. So I'm gonna share these habits with you. Every billionaire I've studied seems to have this burning passion or relentless drive. They wake up early, they work 16 hours per day, they don't take any vacations. But doing those things won't inherently make you wealthy. I mean, you could wake up early and eat a hamburger. Oh boy, 3 a.m. So we have to ask why they're waking up early. Why does Mr. B sleep in his studio? Why does Rihanna work while she's eight months pregnant? Why does Elon Musk work 16 hours a day? And that's when it hit me, they all have a clear mission in life. Mr. Beast wants to make the best videos possible to give back to his community. Rihanna wants to make beauty accessible to women of all shades. And Elon wants to create a civilization on Mars. This crystal clear mission of theirs is what drives them to work so many hours. There's a bigger why involved. And even when you consider lower or middle class households, most people are just aimlessly wandering through life. There's no clear direction or path forward, so they don't make much progress. And believe me, I'm not perfect. I want to take some time over the holidays to truly define my business and my life's mission. And I encourage you to do the same. Now because these ultra wealthy people have a crystal clear vision, they won't let anything get in their way. The hurdles they face are simply stepping stones. Alex Ramosi has famously said, you can't lose if you don't quit. So this habit can be packaged as they don't take no for an answer. Meaning they will keep trying and trying until they get their desired outcome. I mean, do you know how many failures Oprah Winfrey went through before she got her own TV show? <laughs> She never quit. She always wanted to teach and inspire the masses. The ultra wealthy have that clear vision, which drives them to never take no for an answer. Now let's talk about the idea of risk versus reward. Every single wealthy person has the habit of taking risks. The most dangerous thing you can do in life is play it safe. Because if you always play it safe, you'll never accomplish anything. But there's a caveat. See, I could take my entire net worth and put it into some Australian penny stock. See, I'm taking risks. But what I'm doing is extremely reckless. You can't just take massive risks expecting to get rich. It wasn't until I read a book called Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. She's a professional poker player and she helped me understand the idea of calculated risks. A calculated risk has a much higher upside than the perceived downside. So leaving my job and going into full-time content creation was a calculated risk because the upside was being able to impact millions while the downside was just finding another job. So look for risks that offer high potential upside and minimal downside. Now these next two habits on the list are the ones I struggle with the most, but if you wanna become ultra wealthy, there's no avoiding these. And ironically, this entire list is built around this habit right here. There's a famous quote from Atomic Habits. It says, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your system. Now, what does that mean? Here's a little example to explain that. Two rival football teams are playing against each other. What is the goal of each football team? To win, right? They both want to win the football game. Well, unfortunately, only one team is going to win. Even though they have the same goal, they're not going to get the same output. So instead of focusing on goals, James Clear says you should focus on systems. So for me, instead of saying I want to hit 100,000 YouTube subscribers, you should subscribe by the way, I should build a system that puts out one quality YouTube video per week. That system could be scripting on Mondays, filming on Tuesdays, editing on Wednesdays. You get the point. The ultra wealthy focus on their systems rather than the goals. The systems is what will produce the desired outcome. And unfortunately, no system can be run without the right people. This is without a doubt my biggest challenge and the challenge of many entrepreneurs. Hiring the right people is incredibly difficult. The time and money that goes into hiring someone and then training that person is massive. But the ROI on a great team is even bigger. I'm starting to learn that the wealthiest people on the planet, Jeff Bezos, Whitney Hurd, LeBron James, all have a great team and the right people behind them. Well, most of them do. Now the question becomes, how do you find and hire the right people? It all comes back to the number one habit. People wanna work for Rihanna because of her mission to make every shade beautiful. People wanna work for Elon because of his mission to go to Mars. Those talented people that you wanna hire will resonate with your mission, and thus they'll work hard for the entire organization. Now this next habit I debated on putting in here, mostly because it's so nuanced and it's difficult for me to accurately describe it, but I'll do my best. Most people go about living their lives how they wanna live. 
They spend their time and money on experiences and luxuries. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes them normal. The ultra wealthy do things differently. They invest all their time. They invest all their money. They are reinvesting everything. I wanna share this quick video of Jeff Bezos in 1999. You yourself are worth somewhere in the vicinity of nine or $10 billion today. I only say that because I've got a follow-up question. Okay. What's with the Honda? <laughs> this is a perfectly good car. <laughs> so even though he was worth $9 billion, he was still driving a $9,000 car. And it shows that the ultra wealthy reinvest everything. Again, because they're truly dedicated to their mission. And lastly, this is how the ultra wealthy not only became wealthy, but how they stay wealthy. Take Mark Cuban. He started a software company in 1983 called Micro Solutions. He then sold it for $6 million. After that, he went into streaming services and sold broadcast com for 5.7 billion. Eventually he pivoted to a full-blown media business and is now one of the richest sharks on Shark Tank. He owns the Dallas Mavericks and is now the founder of Cost Plus Drugs, which is disrupting the pharmacy industry. He's constantly innovating and continuing to learn new things. It's no surprise that to stay relevant, you must consistently learn new things. I mean, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates both read hundreds, if not thousands of books. So if you read, listen to podcasts and take courses consistently, I'd say you're on the right track to becoming ultra wealthy. The ultra wealthy have a level of wealth unimaginable to most of us. And unfortunately, most of us will never become a billionaire. But I'm okay with that. Personally, I don't need a billion dollars to be happy. Maybe just a couple million, but. <laughs> but I will be taking these habits with me in order to live a wealthy life. And if you wanna see some of the habits that I implement in the morning, check out my productive morning routine here. Thanks for watching.